이어질 대답은요. 다오란 무엇인가 입니다. 탈중앙 자율 조직을 선보이면서 글로벌 마케팅의 네트워크를 빌딩하는 다오 스튜디오 한국 총괄인 논스 송대웅 님의 진행으로 메이커 다오의 기술 전문가이자 레이저 페이의 CEO인 엔조크 임마누엘 원더버스트와 뱅클래스 다오 핵심 멤버인 에드워드 온 그리고 뮤신 다오와 아, 뮤신 다오의 컨트리뷰터인 카렌 리우 이세 분이 함께 하시겠습니다. 박수로 시작해 보겠습니다. 자, 헬로 부산, 자, 웰컴 투 아워 다우 토크 패널 세션. 자, 아임 듀크 프롬 노스 커뮤니티 앤 워킹 에스 어플 타임 다우 이스트. 앤 이트 이즈 마이 아너 투 모드레이 다우 세션 위드 그레드 마인스. 자, 땡, 자, 땡스 투 블록체인 앤 크립토 크런시 휴메니티 헤스 어플 투 더 도어 어 뉴에라 어플 더 디지털 이코노미. 자, 디스 헤스 어 라우 어스 투 무브 비욘 더 비스컬 비스컬 어 트레디셔널 비스컬 월드 앤 크로브레이 인 디지털 월드. 인 디스 컨텍스 다우 사 익스펙티드 어 to become the core engine for creating a digital society and driving innovation. So while traditional corporation has a history dating back to the 17th centuries and play a significant role in modern economic development, that was quite a new technology. Yes, so emerging as recently as 2016. Despite their short existence, those have sprung up in many palms of the, around the world. So in this session, I've gathered the experts who work on DAO, such as Bankris DAO, Myosin DAO, and Maker DAO from stage Canada and Nigeria, and to, to discuss their experiences and collaboration in creating economic and social value. So let's hear a brief, a brief introduction from each panel member. Great. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me here. My name is Karen Liu. I'm the partnerships and PR lead Um, and guild member for Myosin DAO. Myosin DAO is a full service growth and marketing um, agency DAO. We basically are trying to bridge Web2 brands and Web3 projects together, combining um, talent and resources from a distributed network of freelancers. Uh, freelancers who have worked extensively with big brands like Chanel, um, at Facebook, Vayner, and in Web3 across different protocols too. So we really think we have the right expertise to um, support both Web2 and Web3 brands. Um, as a DAO, we've been profitable since day one and just leveraging the resources of our network, we've been able to work with teams like Shiseido, um, and Solana and a couple of other interesting clients too. So excited to just share, you know, how we've been able to make this DAO work and share some learnings too. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ed. Um, I'm the head of uh, partnerships at uh, Wonderverse. Uh, what we do is we build uh, tooling for, uh, for DAOs and other Web3 projects. Um, so far, uh, for the project management side, we've been working with over a thousand projects in the Web3 space. Um, we also build community uh, engagement tools uh, for these DAOs and Web3 projects um, as well. Um, in addition to uh, Wonderverse, um, I also contribute to uh, Bankless Japan, uh, which is an international media node um, of Bankless DAO. Um, so um, I'm, I'm also joined here uh, with another colleague who's also part of uh, Bankless DAO um, in, in Japan. Um, in addition to Bankless Japan, um, I also participate and contribute to um, Akia DAO, Uh, which is a DAO based in Japan trying to solve societal issues around abandoned homes and turning them into uh, creative residencies. Um, yeah, looking forward to sharing my experiences today. Yeah, um, hello everyone. Um, I'm Joko Emanuel, and I'm currently a software engineering consultant, and uh, I contribute to um, the MakerDAO protocol. Um, so basically, MakerDAO is, um, you know, the largest um, DeFi protocol you know, we have today, and like it enables people basically like um, means die by like, you know, locking 
um, setting collateral assets in the protocol. Um, but for MakerDAO, I also contribute to um, Descent Protocol, which is um, a lending protocol that enables people, means African um, stable coins uh, using USDC as collateral. You know, looking forward to like um, discussing about DAOs and like you know, I'm saying you know every sharing everything I know about about decentralized autonomous organizations. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for sharing about yourself. And so now let's move on. Our first topic is like defining DAO. So DAO is indeed a broad and evolving concept. So and its def definition continually to develop. So how do you all define DAO? And, and what are the fundamental principles of DAOs? Um, yeah, sure, I can take this question first. So uh, DAO stands for uh, Decentralized Autonomous Organizations, right? Um, and basically the decision-making and the ownership of a particular group is distributed, it's decentralized. Um, but I would just say that DAOs are not really a new thing. Um, there's just another evolution of cooperatives. And cooperatives have existed for centuries now, right? Between farmer cooperatives, um, uh, grocery cooperatives, and whatnot. And even in um, the US, we had Korean American immigrant groups uh, because we're in Korea. They had, they had cooperatives called ke, where you know, the resources were pooled and then shared back so that they could start businesses loan out uh, money to support college education. And so um, DAOs is just another evolution of that with a slight crypto um, and Web3 component to it. Um, and how I would like to think about a DAO, at least um, from my perspective, is that uh, the resources are pooled, which allows for more efficient scaling. Uh, the products are, well, the um, output from uh, community member efforts are reinvested back into the DAO to support the further growth. And the community members, through their input as well, uh, retain some sort of ownership of, of the um, DAO. And so this has allowed us to, um, at least from a marketing standpoint, or as a marketing agency, be able to flip the agency model that exists in the traditional sense. So a lot of advertising and marketing agencies, the decision making is really centralized up top. And you have a lot of workers who grind for a really long time and accumulate so much knowledge but are not able to have their fair share of equity and compensation. Um, and agencies also thrive on asymmet asymmetric information. Um, so the longer you're in there, the more information you have and you gatekeep that and you might not necessarily share that with other agency members as well just because that is your source of capital. And DAO sort of flips that in its head where we believe in this open sharing model where um, the more information is shared, uh, the more you can go work on deals collectively um, and, uh, and the work is, is distributed fairly um, as a collective member. Um, and we believe that um, this sort of model doesn't just have to exist for Myosin side on the marketing. It can exist in any service uh, application. So if you're an event management team, a developer, a designer, uh, you know, a lawyer, all those could really just flip some of the uh, traditional centralized models in which this business operates. Yeah, um, just to add to what um, you know, Karin said, I mean, I think I, I actually like to define DAOs as you know a set of tools that basically like helps um, human organization in a trustless manner. Um, so, so, so basically, like think about it this way: imagine a diverse group of people from all over the world coming together to basically um, align on. Um, a particular initiative, you know, where we come together and then we um, have like a set of proposals and we vote on that proposals and we basically like, you know, um, agree on the direction of where the proposals are actually going to like, are basically going to go in um, a very trustless manner. And trustless, you know, in the sense that like it's being powered by smart contracts 
and you know there is basically like you know no human intervention like you know involved i think that's where like the autonomous in like DAOs actually like you know come from and DAOs basically means decentralized autonomous organization where you know we are just a group of people coming together you know to align on a particular initiative and like we we basically like you know set rules and regulations that are being controlled by um, set of codes like you know via smart contracts right so that's that's basically how how I think you know um, all the, I, I like to like you know define DAOs yeah uh, so I'm just gonna agree with everything that uh, Karen and Joku has mentioned I think the only thing I'll add is uh, for DAOs I just want to focus on the the, the D um, the decentralized part um, I, I think it's uh, really just a a group of friends or a group of people working towards a common goal. Um, I think it's uh, basically a, a chat group with a, with a bank account, essentially, right? Um, uh, I, I think I think for for DAOs, uh, it is very uh, attractive for folks that are looking for something that is uh, a low barrier to entry um, to get involved and work on something that you're very passionate about. Um, yeah, I think that's all I'll add. Yeah, wow, thank you for sharing. But I realize it is really hard to define DAO as a single world. But yeah, definitely, but as you guys mentioned, the DAO is, has like the keyword, like the decentralized commu community and cryptocurrency. So definitely, yeah, it is like the great. So let's move on to our next topic. Yeah, so next topic is like the evolution of DAOs. So what change have you seen DAOs in last year to now? So what are the upcoming changes you predict? Uh, yeah, I, I think maybe I'll start. Uh, so when I got involved in Wonderverse, because they were building DAO tooling, so working with uh, like other DAOs, um, I, I got to see kind of firsthand uh, what a lot of projects were doing. Um, I think during the, the, bull, the bull run, um, a lot of folks were just FOMOing into um, getting involved in DAOs on the chance of getting uh, you know, an airdrop or a token allocation because you, know, you were involved in something. Um, to be honest, uh, my, myself included, uh, but I was less, less on the uh, financial incentive and more just like getting involved in something that was a little decentralized and opposite of my uh, previous uh, uh, corporation job. Um, I think what we've seen in the bear market is that um, DAOs are more focused on um, preserving and surviving um, this, this bear cycle. And what we've seen is that um, there's really only two things that you can do, right, uh, for, for survival. It's one is to generate revenue, and the other is to uh, either grow or retain your user base. Um, and so what I've seen is a lot of DAOs are now focusing more on, um, on generating revenue from, from their members. Like, because there's a lot of different types of, uh, types of DAOs, uh, just like a traditional company, there's, you know, protocol DAOs, there's product DAOs, services DAOs, like uh, Myosin, for example, and each are trying to find ways to uh, sustain themselves. Um, so that is, that is one aspect. And then the other aspect is just like, how do you uh, keep interest in uh, the community during this like low interest cycle? Um, and I think a lot of it is like, how do you uh, give um, little contributions or little contribution opportunities to your community members to give them engaged um, so that they feel like, you know, uh, there's activity. Because I've joined so many discords and telegrams when, where like, you know, nothing is said for like two weeks at a time. And you can kind of tell like that DAO is kind of dead. Um, and so, um, yeah, that's, that's definitely something I've seen. Uh, just to add on the what upcoming changes, um, I think maybe uh, because of that, a lot of uh, projects or DAOs are seeing that they need to think more about intentional uh, role design uh, and, and, and um, creating a community journey, uh, which is like what Wonderverse is focused on. Like, how do you think about like day one, someone onboards into your community? What are they gonna do next? And like, how can they uh, stay engaged? And it's not just, you know, everyone joins the Discord and you kind of hope for the best. You have to be a little bit more intentional about it if you want long-term success for your project. Um, yeah, so uh, just to ask like, you know, what you said, right? Like when I first got into like, you know, crypto, um, I, I actually like, you know, experienced, um, an organization that actually claims to like be a DAO basically um, fall apart due to you know lack of you know interest aligned, right? But like with the evolution of DAOs, we've actually seen um, you know situations where or scenarios where you know um, it's no longer about tokens, but more about like you know the contribution that like individuals actually making to like you know that that's particular DAO um, where, you know, people are basically, you know, um, 
pe- 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 people actually like v- vote based on the amount of contribution they actually make to like you know the protocol, other than the amount of tokens that they actually have. So it's more you know it's less speculation and like you know more participation. So that's like the evolution of like you know DAOs we've seen. And um, for instance, like the um, retro PG fund, right? Um, where you know the opti- um, optimism pr- protocol basically, like you know, give out grants re- um, retroactively. Where you know, like I mean, I get grants based on my the impact I've made in like the optimism ecosystem, rather than you know because I am I, I just want like you know the OP tokens or I just want you know some airdrops, right? So like we've actually seen like a very great like evolution of DAOs from just being incentive aligned to you know um, being like you know core partic- being like you know a core participant of like that particular initiative. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, chiming in from DAOs that are not you know token focused, I would say you know a lot of community oriented or services DAO that I've seen come up or identity or culture focused DAOs. Um, I'm realizing, or and I think there's a, a lot of people might share this observation, but a DAO might not be needed for that. You know, if you're an NFT project, uh, if you have, if you like music and you create a DAO around there, there's not necessarily a need, or, or if you have a group of friends who just want to hang out together, there might not necessarily be a DAO um, structure that is uh, necessary in that context because that just brings in more complication from a governance standpoint. And, um, you know, he, as humans, we're very incentive focused, right? And in some of these culture oriented DAOs that we've seen spin up during the bull market, you see just huge membership numbers, which is great, but also a lot of this like free rider component where, you know, similar to what Njoku saying around like, you want to reward the core contributors, you have a lot of people working and then um, a lot of free riders just benefiting off of the work and efforts of others. And so I think um, some of these DAOs are evolving and trying to figure out, you know, what is uh, the model that we can keep communities engaged with and also keep the DAO from a financial perspective functioning. And um, this is where I've seen like smaller DAOs that are membership focused um, really succeed here because you know they're wholly invested in um, the longevity of a DAO and innovating around like, okay, is there a specific product or service or just um, market... Um, offering that they can uh, put out there that will bring in um, some sort of revenue or interest from the membership side to stay engaged. Oh, wow. So even in the midst of the bear market, DAOs remain active and continue to see the significant development. So yeah, I'm so excited for DAO. So let's move on to the next topic. Yeah, so I believe this topic is likely to generate the most interest. So what are the examples of successful DAOs and why do you think they are successful? Yeah, so I can opine from the Myosin side. What's ma- so like I said earlier, uh, we've been profitable since day one as a DAO. Um, and that's because as a marketing services DAO, we um, have a vast network of uh, graphic designers, growth strategists, uh, PR and partnership um, experts, people who have their own personal networks as well as expertise uh, to help drive a deal forward. And so when a client approaches us with a specific go-to-market or growth problem, we think we, we share with the DAO and different members with the right experience might raise their hand and offer their critique or ideas on how they can solve this specific client challenge. Or sometimes from the BD side, um, someone in the network might say, hey, I actually know this person who knows that person from the client side. Here's, some, here's what I know from the client and here's the nuance that you should think about um, when pitching to them. <clears throat> and so we've been able to secure some pretty strong marketing um, and growth um, partnerships with our clients. Um, and 
tap into our deep network of about 150 skilled marketers to assemble like the Avengers team of different, uh, of, of, of different marketing experts. Um, and and um, to help ensure the quality of the deliverables, uh, these members, when they are assigned projects, they're held accountable for the quality of their work too. And so as a DAO, we mandate that each team member for a specific project fill in anonymous um, surveys assessing their DAO members' contribution to a specific product, a project. So there's a reputational score that comes with uh, your work, and that reputational score will determine what kind of projects you get staffed to in the future. Um, and then the, the wonderful thing, and, and if we're talking about incentive alignment here, is beyond the reputational score and, and, and this decent flow of projects that come across your way, um, you, you have the bulk of the profits come back to you. And so for our DAO members, they see, oh, um, within 30 days of being in Myosin and working on a project, I can actually earn money from this versus you know, um, some of the, uh, in comparison to maybe some of the agency rates that they may have gotten as a freelance marketer or versus like some of the DAO work that they may have done um, in other situations. So I think um, what's, in summary, what's made us successful uh, as a DAO is uh, distributed presence, uh, distributed uh, resources and expertise, as well as accountability. Yeah, um, so, so, so yeah, I think uh, for me, um, the most successful DAO, or like, you know, one of the most successful DAOs I've seen is actually Mecha DAO. Um, you know, I've seen Mecha DAO go from being just a DAO at the early days to like being run by like the foundation and now back to um, a self-sustaining DAO, right? Like make, um, today um, we have about 6.9 billion DAI in circulation and um, the Mecha protocol, I think last year generated over 190 million USD in, um, you know, um, revenue alone. So... The protocol itself is um, self-sustaining, and I think that's one way you know we can actually define success. And then, in terms of like you know the um, autonomy of 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 the DAO, um, you know, Rune recently like introduced you know something called sub DAOs, and even before sub DAOs, we actually had core units, right, within the um, maker organization or within the um, broader maker DAO. So. Every core unit, so every department is a core unit, and like the members of those core units are basically responsible for like you know driving like the day-to-day -day operations of like um, of, of 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 the protocol. And now those core units are being turned into like you know sub DAOs, and those sub DAOs are actually going to like you know have tokens where the members are basically you know rewarded these tokens based on their contribution. So every member within that sub DAO is now, you know, responsible or is now like, you know, um, an integral part of like decision making um, within that DAO as, you know, opposed to, you know, the, the, the larger like, you know, maker ecosystem. So I would say like, you know, that for me is, you know, success as, as, as a DAO. And that's basically how, how I think about it. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. So I have more practical question to add. So when DAO members are working together, how do you ensure alignment and consist consistency of the quality of work versus like a traditional organization? I, I, think, for, I think for DAOs, uh, what's important is, uh, is culture. Um, and culture is a you know, group of people plus vibes equals culture. And I think culture eats uh, organizational structure uh, any day. Um, because in, in a traditional organization, it's really hard to um, change your structure, right? But for, for DAOs, um, the, the only thing that's consistent, I think, is, um, is the culture. Because uh, at the end of the day, the most important thing about a DAO is the people in it. Because of the low barrier of, of entry, participating in a DAO, um, that just means that, um, you know, you want to focus on the people. And I think if you, have a, if you have a really good culture of, like, working together and making sure that people are aligned, um, that's important. 
one of the things that An Anjoku said was that uh, like at MakerDAO, you're creating more and more sub DAOs. And because of that, like you could have like a really, really large DAO. Um, but if you decide to break things into like smaller components, then it's much more easy to, to manage. So I think that's, uh, that's like one way of, uh, one way of doing it. Um, in addition to, of course, any organization which is like clear communication, setting expectations, and uh, just making sure that you know people are held accountable. It's a little bit more difficult because it's it's a DAO, um, but I'm I'm sure yeah, like we can get more into it after. Oh, thank you for sharing, and it is my honor to host like a successful DAO member here. Yeah, so let's move on next topic. Yeah, so now now you all share about uh, what DAOs are and how DAOs work. But in terms of infrastructure, yeah, let's talk about the, what, what kind of infrastructure we need in DAO and what is the key infrastructure element you think for setting up DAO and sub DAO? Yeah, so um, some of the, uh, just I feel like Ed's comments around culture being um, a really key component for just organizational like longevity. I would echo that in terms of uh, the infrastructure side, um, making sure that uh, the culture fit is there and is upheld uh, is what will keep the DAO running for much longer. And so, um, well, culture and expertise, I would say, actually. Uh, so so um, in the Myosin side, we have thousands of applications uh, of just freelance marketers and growth strategists who want to join. Uh, but we have just a 2% acceptance rate. Uh, and so the reason why we keep the threshold so low for entry is that we want to keep the quality high in terms of not just expertise, but also um, making sure that the DAO members can work well together, can jive, can, can um, grab a beer after working on a project together. Uh, so we have like three rounds of interview. We have a written application around that, uh, just sussing out your um, area of expertise as well as just how you might potentially fit within the culture of Myosin. Um, I think the other thing from an infrastructure side uh, that I mentioned earlier is just having some sort of accountability and governance for uh, maintaining the quality of work um, and even contribution of work uh, so that we don't have that kind of free rider effect uh, take place within the DAO. So um, uh, we, I mentioned earlier, we have some reputational scoring component for DAO members that are required. Um, but we just, the other ways of measuring uh, their reputation is also seeing how active they are within the Discord, whether they're engaging on a daily basis and sharing best practices that they've noticed from um, across their own networks and um, making sure that they're engaging uh, within the Discord. And how you set up the Discord, of course, is another um, aspect of maintaining com community and um, putting in that infrastructure for the DAO. But yeah, um, I would say vetting the people um, as well as uh, uh, bringing in those accountability and like a uh, point system for, not necessarily like a rigid point system, but some level of like measuring engagement um, is what I would say is important for, for DAO um, infrastructures. Yeah, um, so just to add to like uh, what Karin said, so um, I mean, I would, I would you know, think of um, DAO infrastructure as the digital equivalent of constructing like, you know, a physical building. And, you know, just as like, you know, um, a building needs a strong foundation, um, DAOs like require solid foundations as well. And basically those foundations could actually be, you know, making sure that like, you know, you have clear sets objectives as a DAO. You also like, you know, have clear governance structures that basically like guides and control like you know um, the operating process of, of of that DAO and you know like um, Ed you know said that like you know DAOs basically like you know revolves around like you know culture so it's also very very important that like you know while building your DAO like you 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 set you know um, processes to, like you know ensure that the the incentives or like you know um, if, if everybody or every participant of that DAO 
are basically like you know aligned in aligned and like you know committed to basically like you know pushing that DAO forward and um, you know just making sure that like you know the DAO actually meets its objectives. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so I have like extra question for this section. So, what should Busan prepare to be global DAO city? Uh, I, I, I just want to order fried chicken at 2 a.m. in the morning. Uh, and, like, that's actually oh, so not... what a, do you mean? That? Yeah, it's actually not a joke. Um, so, so I think if, if Busan wants to be a, a global city in terms of blockchain, um, you know, I think part of that is attracting a lot of uh, foreign talent or global talent. Um, and as someone who's not a Korean native, um, I can't order food. Um, and because, uh, because blockchain is, is very global in nature, you have to work like North American uh, time. Um, and so because of that, like, and I can't order food at night, like sometimes I, I go starving and run to McDonald's at 2 a.m. to buy food. <laughs> no shade with McDonald's, but uh, yeah, just very logistical stuff is very important. Oh, I realized that's why my last offering friend asked to order the chicken for me. Oh my God, yeah, thank Thanks. you for sharing, yes. Yeah, so, okay, so I think now we already spent the most of time for our session, so thank you for sharing your thoughts. And while DAO still faces many challenges, it seems that as individuals like you, the future of DAO looks promising. Yes. So to Busan, consider getting DAO, DAO ecosystem. So let's DAO it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 감사합니다. 감사합니다. 감사합니다.